guys, this is Arum here. Welcome back to Reanimation Schemes, right? Yes. This demo is actually pretty long and I'm quite excited, but then that means I'm going to be really depressed <laughs> once it ends. But here we are, waiting for the meeting to start, which is actually starting now. I see Javin go, hey! <laughs> hi, hi, Lord Waven. Really wonder what your first name is, though. I see Javin Cavado is the chief commander of the Imperial Necromancy Authority, heading to the front of the room. Walking next to him is the man I met earlier at the front desk, Lord Waven. He lifts his chin slightly, staring into the crowd in front of him. Even from this distance, I can feel the coldness surrounding him like an aura. <clears throat> Lord Waven clears his throat, the sound immediately drawing everyone's attention. They wait for the last bit of murmuring to die down before Kavados takes a step forward and addresses the sitting audience. Good morning. Thank you for responding to our summons and attending this meeting. I apologize for asking you to drop everything so abruptly. Unfortunately, there is an urgent matter that needs our attention. As you may know, starting yesterday, many death mages have reported difficulties with contacting or summoning spirits. The cause is still unknown, as is the... Uh, as is a solution, which is the reason you have been invited here for an indefinite stay until the problem is solved or resolved. The tension in the room thickens. I almost have the impression that I'm going to suffocate just from the atmosphere around us. However, worry not. I have faith that with our collective efforts, this complication will soon pass. We have also received help from many of our friends from the mage community. Lord Waven from the Pure Magic Authority will be with us to watch over the situation and guide us when needed. Every pair of eyes turns towards the nobleman, expecting him to make a speech as well. Instead, he just dips his head in a curtain nod and remains silent. Gavado seems unfazed by Lord Waven's uncooper uncooperativeness and simply carries on without missing a beat. Each branch of the Imperial Magic Authority has also kindly sent a few representatives to assist wherever possible. They will be staying at the headquarters in the meantime, and I trust that you will slow the utmost respect and graciousness to our fellow mages. I cover my mouth as the yawn escapes me. Ziana, I can see Cavado's oratory skills have not improved in the slightest in the past few years. Eventually, as though sensing the crowd's waning interest, Cavado's speech draws to an end, and he looks into the assembly ahead, making a gesture with his hand. Would anyone be willing to share their wisdom? An eerie silence, fall, and yeah, eerie silence falls over the room, and many shrink back in their seats. I raise an eyebrow, their reactions are baffled. I nudge Larissa on the side with my elbow, leaning closer to her to whisper. Hmm. Why is nobody stepping up to speak? I thought there would be dozens scrambling for this opportunity. Oh. I don't think anyone has an inkling about this situation. Yes. But when has I ever stopped anyone from giving their silly input? I thought many would at least try, to pray, try and pray to the twelve deities that their idea somehow works out so they can be the hero in this time of crisis. No way. Usually, yes, but with Lord Waven standing right there... Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He's known for having no tolerance for nonsense or anything that is a waste of his time. Nobody will dare suggest uh, dare to suggest a thing in front of him unless they are really confident about their idea. I recall Lord Waven's icy demeanor from when we met at the front desk earlier, and I can't help but nod in agreement at Larissa's words. Right, between his rank and his personality is the wonder people are intimidated by him. Larissa's prediction proves to be accurate. As the heavy silence persists, Cavado's frown deepens with every passing moment, but still nobody speaks. From where I'm sitting, I can see Audrey's, Aud Aud Audrey's head sticking out among the people in the front row. He seems to be fidgeting, probably fighting with himself on whether to say something. <clears throat> Significant contributions will be rewarded. <laughs> Lord Waven's voice cuts through the silence like a knife, and once again, all eyes fly to him. He simply crosses his arms over his chest and stares off into the distance, showing no intention to give further details about said rewards. Kavado seems, to take in a, seems taken aback by Lord Waven's declaration as well, and he questions, Is this newly offered by the Magic Authority? Would you mind telling us what the reward is? Yes. 2,000 gold pieces or a favor from the Authority. A collective gasp ripples through the crowd. Even I can't help but sit up straighter. My interest fully peaked. Yeah, because money. <laughs> Two thousand gold pieces is a small fortune, not to mention the other option of giving a, getting a favor from the Imperial Magic Authority itself, which could be priceless. Which, I mean, I could ask for a promotion, right? That's a favor. Do it. As though sensing the overwhelming reaction, Lord Waven adds, speaking for the first time without being prompted, hmm. the favor must be within reason reasonableness. 
The restructuring doesn't dampen anyone's enthusiasm. The atmosphere in the room has dramatically changed from three statements by Lord Waven that targeted everyone's weaknesses. Lord Waven may be a man of a few words, but he certainly knows how to use those few words well. This time, when Kavados invites others to speak once more, a number of mages step forward. The meeting proceeds in a new flurry of activity. Several times I want to jump in with my own comments, tempted by the promise of the reward. But someone else always beats me to it with better thought-out remarks, so I have no choice but to give up. Sianna, maybe I really should have attended the Magic Theory classes more often when I was in the Academy. Then I might be able to actually say something useful. Or at least understand what the scholars are talking about. My mind begins to wander, and it starts to get increasingly difficult to stay awake. Another hour later, I'm already giving in and admit defeat in the battle against my heavy eyelids. But just then, I hear Larissa's voice in my ear. <laughs> Chico, psst, did you fall asleep? What? No, of course not. What, would I do that? I'm just resting my eyes. Yep. But your secret is safe with me. Come on, the meeting's over. Let's go to the dining hall for lunch. We need to hurry before all the good tables are taken. The meeting has finally ended. I must have missed that announcement when my con concentration lapsed. I opened my eyes to find Larissa standing next to me, bouncing on her heels with a bright smile. Sure enough, people around us are also starting to get on their feet, stretching their arms and legs before shuffling towards a door. Hmm. Dining hall. You know... The authority is providing three meals for free while we're here, right? Huge buffet at the dining hall. Holy shit, and it's a buffet? Free food? My eyes wide and instantly revitalize as though as uh, as though a reju re rejuvenation potion has been poured down my throat and leap to my feet. As if on cue, my stomach gives a rumble, which elicits a giggle from Larissa. Look here! I didn't even get the chance to have breakfast this morning. I blame Sebastian. No way. He blames Sebastian for everything. I'm sure it can't be his fault. Yes. It really is, I tell you. He insisted on leaving as soon as I woke up this morning, barely giving me barely gave me time to dress, let alone eat. Larissa doesn't look convinced, probably because she has never experienced one of Sebastian's lectures as a nagging, annoying human. Anyway. Are you ready? Let's go. Where's Sebastian? <laughs> I end up having to delay our quest for food to make a quick stop at the front desk for my room key, which also gives Ald Aldrius time to catch up with us in the hallway. Oh, so okay. The game's not gonna end the way I thought it was gonna end. Thankfully, I don't encounter any more problems this time, and I'm given a guest room on the second floor of the headquarters, not too far from Aldrius. Soon we arrive at the dining hall, my eyes are instantly drawn to the numerous tables in the back of the hall, laden with a variety of dishes that both look and smell inviting. My mouth begins to water, and I swallow hard at the sight. Larissa notices my reaction and elbows me playfully with a cheeky grin. <laughs> like the drool for your mouth before someone sees it, Michiko. My hand instinctively lifts to, lifts to the corner of my lips before I realize Larissa is just teasing. She bursts into a round of giggles while I roll my eyes at her. As expected, the hall is packed with people at this time of day. Thankfully, luck seems to be on our side today. But we managed to grab one of the last unoccupied tables. I fall into the chair with a sigh of relief. Ziana, well got you. Keep going, Jesus. Couldn't they have prepared more tables in the dining hall? Hmm. I guess the headquarters isn't built to accommodate this many mages at once. <sighs> as evidenced by their lack of guest rooms earlier too, I suppose. I almost thought we'd have to sit on the floor in a corner with our plates. <laughs> like an indoors picnic. You know, that actually qu sounds qu kind of fun. Larissa claps her hands together, purring with delight. How exciting! Let's do it! No, we're not. <laughs> not when we have already, we have a table already. Unless, you know, there's an older, like, mage group, then I'll, I'll give up my seat. And the other, I'm sure the other mages waiting for a seat would be grateful to us for giving our giving up our table too. <laughs> if you don't mind causing your mother to keep kneel over <laughs> from the shock and horror of witnessing your undignified behavior, Larissa slips slips into a pout and she lets out a sigh as if genuinely mourning the lack of opportunity to follow through with her idea. Oh. You're probably right. What a disappointment! Audrius hides a small, amused smile before interrupting our exchanges. We then take turns heading to the buffet area to choose our meal. When I return with one plate in each hand, a piled high with del del delicacies. Right? Delicacies? Deli yeah, I believe. I find both Larissa and Audrius sitting at the table already digging in. Larissa looks up at me as I draw near, her eyes widening at the sight of what I'm holding, and she erupts into giggles. Oh dear, Eleanor! 
Hey, Jacob, did you leave a single dish untouched? No wonder you took so long. Well... It's all free. Of course I'm taking advantage of that. I slide into the chair beside her, placing the plates on the table with care. My heart jumps to my throat when the mountain food wobbles dangerously for a moment before steadying again. <laughs> Is there even any food left for the mages who arrived late? <laughs> Not any of my concern. It's their fault for being so late. I begin wolfing down the food, the mouth too full to respond to Lursa's continuous teasing. Aldrius sets down his fork, eyeing me with a tiny smile on him, of his aspirated concern as I scurf down my meal. Hmm. Be careful, Michiko. Take your time eating. There's no rush. Aldi. Don't worry, Aldi. I'll be fine. And then she ends up choking on something. It doesn't take me long to finish off everything on my plate. I let out a small sigh of satisfaction, leaning back in the chair. It may not taste as good as Sebastian's cooking, but then again, few chefs could hold a candle to him. At the very least, the sheer quantity makes up for any differences in quality. After allowing myself to rest for a few seconds, I stand up from my seat, holding the two plates in my hands. Uh, Hang on, where are you going? Oh. To get a second serving. Oh, dear Eleanor, you know. No way, what is the size of your stomach? Are you even human? Paying no mind to. No heed, not mind. No heed to Larissa's exclamations of surprise and awe. I head towards the buffet area again. With the delicious taste of the pasta lingering on my tongue, I make a beeline for the table where the dish was served. A group of mages happens to be standing before the table, blocking my path. I move to weave around them, but just as I pass them, I hear a familiar hoot of laughter. Wait. Uh. Jory, what are you doing here? The word involuntarily escapes from my mouth, and I look left and right, searching the room with my eyes. My gaze lands on one mage within the group, who has dirty half-blonde hair, covered by a funny-looking red hood that I couldn't forget, even if I tried. Jory Holland. What in the name of Ziana? No, it can't be right. How could he be here among the death mages? Not only is the Jory I know deceased, but he's also left behind in my house, in... Wherever, with a strict warning to stay put until we return. Could it be his twin brother, a relative who bears an uncanny resemblance to him? But that wouldn't explain the identical outfit, unless his entire family shares the same eccentric, immature style of fashion. Narrowing my eyes, I take a minute to observe the group. After watching their interactions and overhearing some terrible jokes from the Jory lookalike, I can't deny it any longer. It really is the Jory Halloween I know, and summoned from the spirit realm. For the love of Ziana, how did he get here? And what in the world does he think he's doing? Setting aside a plate still in my hand on the nearest table, I stalk up to the group and grab Jory's arm. He gives a dramatic yelp before turning to me with a wide grin. Hey! Jacob! Golly gal, it's fancy running into you here. <laughs> yeah, what a surprise. <laughs> For me, you mean. What in the name of Ziana are you doing here? Huh? Getting lunch, of course. It's... <laughs> I mean, he's technically answering your question. It takes everything to me, in me to restrain myself from bell bellowing at him that he's a spirit and he can't move. Sucking, sucking in a deep breath to calm myself, I speak through gritted teeth. No. Come with me. Ah. But I haven't had lunch yet. I silence him with a sharp glare, but he doesn't seem intimidated, his cheeky grin not wavering for even a second. He turns to the group of mages he's with and grins at them in reassurance. <laughs> it's okay, friends. I'll be back soon. Go forth without me. Carry my spit. Not wanting to be subject to another bad pun of his, I interrupt his farewell and start dragging him towards the door of the dining hall. I keep a tight hold on his arm to prevent any attempts of escape. Ah. But you go, slow down. I can't keep up. <laughs> Yet you kept up with us just fine when we left for the capital this morning. Jory simply chuckles without an ounce of shame. Mischief sparkles in his eyes, and he continues in a cheery tone. And it's, yeah, cheery tone completely oblivious to my anger. Golly gallops! You really can't wait to catch up with me in private, eh? Didn't know you'd be so happy to see me. Then I wouldn't have had to spend all morning hiding from you. Yes. I can't wait to blast you all the way back to... So... Dude, how do you say this name? Serenidin Cirrus. I don't know. I can't even. I'm trying to physically know how to say this word, but I cannot. With magic. He doesn't seem to hear the thinly veiled threat in my throat. Throat. In my throat. In my voice. Or maybe he did and just doesn't care. Huh? Is that really possible? Isn't blind really far away from the capital? How would it work? Are there portals connecting the two regions? <laughs> deep breaths, Michiko, deep breaths. Trying my best to block out his endless string of questions, I continue hauling him out of the dining hall. We've almost reached the door when all of a sudden chills run down my spine. I can feel a piercing gaze land on me, as though boring a hole through, the, through my <laughs> back into my soul. Is Sebastian? I whip around to look for the source, yeah, as if I had imagined it, all the feeling is gone. The fuck? 
I sweep the room with careful searching eyes, but I find no one even glancing in my direction. Everyone seems far too absorbed in their own business to pay me any attention. What in the name of Ziana was that? Was it just my imagination because I'm on edge? Or has someone discovered Jory's unusualness already? Surely not, right? With Jory's unique ability to manifest this physical body, he looks exactly like any living person. Even I can hardly believe that he's actually a spirit despite being the one who summoned him. It's not possible for someone to guess with just one glance. Next to me, Jory is still chattering away without a care in the world, unaware of what trans just transpired. Jory, just stop talking for a moment. Follow me, we can talk safely in my room. Jory's mouth parts in confusion. He looks like he wants to launch into another round of questioning, but to my relief, he actually listens to my request and keeps his thoughts to himself. Well, hello. <laughs> into this room. But this is where we're actually going to save. Once we enter my temporary bathroom, Oh, bathroom. Bedroom. I slam the door shut behind us. Obviously, I need to take a break or something, because I'm calling this bedroom a bathroom. <laughs> this bathroom is weird. Why is there a bed in my bathroom? Anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.